Hey guys, David here and welcome to a brand new YouTube training. So after the success of the last Zoom training where I showed you step by step how to go live on Facebook with Zoom, I've decided to come back with a brand new update dated training because so much has changed on Zoom over the last week or so. So let's dive straight into today's training. Okay, so just quickly to show you, this was the first initial training I put up about Zoom, going live on Facebook. It had over 6,000 views, and this is increasing daily with 33 comments. Now, after going through all their comments, I saw there was a lot of things still popping up and a lot of things changing. People watching this video, coming back and asking me more questions. So I want to go a little bit deeper with this training. So you're after just a quick training, go back and check this initial training out just here. But if you're after a more detailed training to go really through almost all the options available with Zoom to be able to go live on Facebook, then let's get started. So first of all, head over to zoom.us. You will then land on the screen that looks like this. You can sign up for free, which is excellent, but to be able to go live on Facebook or YouTube or any other streaming sites, we need a paid version. So if we head over to the plans and pricing here, it shows us the options. So the free one is completely free, but we can't stream, we can't stream on any social media channels. So to be able to stream on any social media channels, you need the pro, business or enterprise account. So most people will just go for the 11.99 option or it's different in different countries. We would press buy now. Then it gives us an option to either buy annually at a discounted rate or to purchase monthly. I would say that most people and right now just need it for monthly. So click monthly, enter your card details in, enter your registration, click pay, and then you'll be ready to go. Once you're ready to go, I'm going to press sign in just here. I'm going to log into my account. And then I land on the home screen. So your home screen might look something like this, or it might take you straight to a meeting setting here. Now, before we can go live, we have to activate live streaming. So you need a pro or paid version of Zoom, and then you need to activate it within Zoom, the desktop site. So we're going to come to settings here on the left hand side. Then it says meeting, recording and telephone. We need to hover over where it says in meeting advanced. This is going to take us right the way down the page because this is quite a lengthy page. It's taken us down then we're going to keep scrolling until we see live streaming. So here we go, allow live streaming. We're going to turn this one on. So you're looking for allowed live streaming. We're going to turn this on. And then we're going to tick all four boxes. The reason we want to tick all four boxes, this allows us to stream on Facebook, Workplace by Facebook, YouTube, and custom live streaming services. So if you're wanting to stream on other additional social media sites, they might ask for certain codes. And by clicking this one here, Zoom will be able to give you those codes you need to be able to stream live from Zoom onto a different social media channel. So let's press save. Now this is saved, we're going to scroll up to the top where it says host a meeting and we're going to click with video on. It's then going to take us to a page where we need to download the software. So if you've never used Zoom before, a box, a blue box here will say download. We're going to press download, we're going to launch it and then the Zoom will pop up. If you've already got it, you'll have a pop up like this and we're going to press open zoom.us. And here we go, we're straight in. Now, before we take you any further, I just want to click X off this and end meeting. Now, we don't always need to sign directly in on the actual website. When you press that download button, it installed the Zoom software directly on your computer. So if I head over to my right hand side, you can see this, the Zoom software. So if I click this once, this is going to open up the Zoom software. We're going to click sign in. We're going to click sign in with Google and we are good to go. So this is kind of like your dashboard for the software we downloaded. Now, before we go into anything further, there's a few more things I want to show you quickly. If we press this drop down button here now, we're going to start with video that's selected and we're going to use my meeting ID. If you tick this off, 
every time you start a new meeting and you want to share it with clients, they're going to have to use a completely different meeting ID every single time. So if you make sure this is ticked on, whoever you give this code to, so if you tell them this is my code, I'll be live at 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. or whatever time you're going live with this code, they'll be able to log in and watch your session or meeting live. So for many personal trainers who are watching this, you might have a session at 6 a.m., 7 a.m. and 8 p.m. and then 5, 6 and 7 p.m. and you don't want to have to keep changing the ID meetings, make sure that this is selected. Then we're going to hover, hover over the meeting ID. We're going to scroll to where it says PMI settings. And this is going to give us the option to add a password in. So if you're giving this meeting ID out and you have maybe two different levels of membership, ones who are allowed access to all your meetings and ones that are only allowed access to some, and you want to give, make sure that it's password protected, we would press this password button here and you would enter your password in. So if I just put hello, Anybody that is using this password, this meeting ID, when they come to sign up, it will then ask them for a password to be accepted in. They type that password in and then they'd be allowed into the meeting. But for this example, we're going to turn this off and then we're going to press save. Next, we're going to press new meeting. Now, this is launching the meeting. So we are live now on Zoom, but we're not live on social media just yet. Before we dive into that section again, let me take you over to the security bit just here. So this is a brand new feature that's been added recently onto Zoom. So we're going to press this security feature and it's going to start with lock meeting. If you press lock meeting, nobody can join or access your meeting while you're in play. So maybe you're doing a one to one call and you don't want any interruptions, no one to join you at all. You'd simply press lock meeting. Now your meeting has been locked. No one else can join. So no matter how long you're in this meeting for, no matter who you're talking to, no one can enter this meeting at all. Even if you ask for a password and everything, okay, there's no way they can join. So we head back over to security and we turn this one off. Now people can join, they put their meeting ID in, they might put the password in and they will be allowed in. But if we go to security again, enable waiting room. So they enter the ID to be able to join, but with enable waiting ID turned on, on the right hand side here, it will show up with their name and it will say that this person is requesting to join your meeting. You simply press accept and they would be allowed into the meeting to be able to watch and take part or whatever your meeting is for. So again, security, lock meeting, make sure no one can join, and an our waiting room, enable waiting room, means people can join, but then you have to accept them in. A few of the settings could be allow participants to share screen, allow them to chat, and allow them to rename themselves. Stuff like that we don't really need to worry about. Okay, so if I slide my screen or my video out the way just here. So when we press participants on the right hand side here, we have a few options. If we press this, so let's just go to the, if you want to invite people who don't already have the code, we'd press participants. The right column would start to show up. We press invite and then you can invite them two ways. You can copy invitation and send them this message. So it would look something like, uh, this here so a nice big long code or we would simply press copy URL and then when we send that to them they have a URL so if somebody was to click this now this would get them to join your zoom meeting so let's go back to zoom really quickly now so let's X off this and go back to the meeting itself so that's how you invite people to join your meeting who don't have the user or meeting ID. Then we have a few more options. We can mute all participants. So when you're talking live on Zoom and someone else's sound is louder than yours, you would go to the back screen and they would become as the main storyteller, the main person talking. So if you're doing a really important meeting or you're demonstrating something and you don't want anyone to disturb you from talking or take over the main screen, we'd simply press mute or by pressing mute all, every single participant is muted, as you can see here. Current and new participants will be muted, so we press continue. So this is blue, everyone's muted. All we do is untick it, all participants will be unmuted, continue, and now, oh sorry, this one here, unmute all, and they've all been unmuted. A few more, if we press more, not more options, there's a few things, we can lock the meeting again, 
play, entry and exit sound. So when someone new joins, it kind of like doorbell ring, it just rings. So you know someone joined or they've asked to join and then mute participants on entry. So you don't have to keep muting them all or you just press mute all and anybody new joins gets automatically muted. OK, so we're almost there. A few more things I want to go to before we go live is the chat option here. This touch chat option here, maybe you're talking, but you've got everyone on mute. You can allow them to write text and you can see what people are talking about. So maybe you're doing a webinar, you've muted everyone, they're just watching. And now instead of you asking, OK, give me your ideas on this and everybody jumping in and talking all over each other, you might literally say to them, OK, give me your ideas on this post it in the chat box and then when we hover over chat here and click this a chat box pops up and you can see the responses you can read out what people are asking or they're giving their advice or suggesting or answering your question then you can either talk to them and call them out via the name or you can literally reply to that message here to everyone or you can do it individually the next feature we have is a share screen version so if i click share screen this then pulls up all the screens you have available. So these are all the screens basic. We have advanced, so you can play portions of the screen, play music and sound only, and you can select different files. So if we just went basic and selected desktop two, so this is my second monitor up here, it would now be sharing my second monitor. You can't see this because you're watching a recording, but they would be seeing what's going on in my second monitor, and they would also be seeing me in this little camera just here. If I want to stop sharing, I'd press stop sharing, and I would come back as the main view from there. So that is the share screen options. Now, if you're doing an important meeting or you want to make sure you record every single session, it's very important we press this record button here. So you can record to the computer or you can record to the cloud. My suggestion would always be record to the computer. That way, whatever you're doing gets automatically recorded to the hard drive of your computer. Then you can upload it to wherever you want afterwards. You could upload it direct to the cloud. So that is the Zoom cloud. But if your connection gets interrupted, if your internet slows down during the meeting, then that might stop the record going to the cloud and you might lose certain parts of the meeting. So if you are going to record a meeting, make sure you record directly to your hard drive. That way, you know, whatever you're doing now is automatically saved onto your computer. Also with the recording option, if you're going to start the recording, I mean, I would always start the recording before before you actually start letting anybody into the meeting room. The reason being, you might start the meeting and you think, yeah, when everyone gets in, I will press record. You start talking, you're getting into the flow, you start explaining everything that you want to do and you forget to press record. So if you are going to record, press record the minute you jump in, then allow the participants in. That way you don't have to remember that you need to record what is going on. The final thing is reactions. I'm not really sure the point of this, but you could be saying something good and when you when you're talking away people might press reactions and give you a hands and you will see a hands kind of clap and applause or they might give you a thumbs up so it could be it's like can everybody hear what i'm saying please give me the thumbs up and they would go onto their phone or their computer and press reaction and press the thumbs up button now we're finally at the live streaming part so if we press these three dots here where it says more it's then going to give us the option to live stream on Facebook, live workplace by Facebook, live on YouTube or live on custom live streaming services. So I know this is telling you that I'm going to show you how to go live on Facebook with Zoom. But any other way, if you want to go live on YouTube or live uh, custom live streaming services, this is exactly the same way. But before I go into it really quickly, it does have a a relatively big glitch okay you might have to try loading it up a few times before it eventually goes live so let's press live on Facebook now this is going to load Facebook up and then it's going to ask you where you want to post so I would say on my timeline on my friends timeline share in the group share an event or share it on the page that you manage so let's say I want to share it in a group Again, all the options are the same. You press whatever location you want, and then the same thing comes up. Now it's asking me for the location. So let's go DK9 online, where I know there's nobody going to be watching. I would select my group, and I would press next. This is then going to pull up the live streaming from Facebook. So it's connecting directly to Facebook. And this part here, this section we're on, 
this is usually the issue part. So that loaded first time, which is success, but sometimes it does have an issue where it just keeps loading over and crashes, loading and crashes, loading and crashes, but that worked first time. Okay, so we're almost there. Now all we're gonna do is give it a nice little description. This is what you want people to see when they load up on their phone. So you might say, this uh, is a test for Zoom. That could be the description. Then you might be, uh, join us live in Zoom, and you'll put the code. Now to go and find that code again, we go back to Zoom, we press uh, participants, we press invite, copy URL, go back to Facebook, and you would post that URL just here. So this is the title of the post. Then you're telling them if they want to join you live on Zoom, you'd post that there. Or if you didn't want them to participate live on Zoom and just watch on Facebook, you might delete that from there. Then all you do is press go live. Uh, we don't want to add a title, go live anyway, or add a title, we'll go live anyway. Again, when it keeps doing this section, this is where it has that little crash. So if it just says it failed, like it might do in a minute, you just press go live again until it eventually lets you in. But this has worked first time. So here you go. As you can see, I am now live in the group. This is test for Zoom. And as you can see there, there is about a 10 second lag. So whatever I'm saying now live to you watching this, so if I start waving my hands now, let's see how long it takes. It's so about six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So as you can see, there is a bit of a lag between what you're saying live on Zoom. There you go, and it's now live. So it's, there's a lag between what you're saying live on Zoom and what actually happens in real life. So just remember that um, you might have to just pause and delay. So you might ask your question live now, give it a few seconds, wait for people to reply, and then reply to them from there. Finally, if we wanted to end this Zoom live session, there's two ways of doing it. We simply go back to our live Zoom screen here. You'd still be able to see all your participants and everything. This is telling me we're live on Facebook. All I would do is press end meeting, end meeting for all, and that ends my Zoom, um, my, my Zoom view. The other thing I wanna say really quickly is once you press end, it will then start saving directly to your computer. So please don't close that lid right away. Let it save onto your hard drive and then you can finish on your computer. And the save onto your hard drive won't be long. It could be a minute up to two minutes, depending on how long you're talking for. But that will save nicely onto your computer. And I think it's at 720 as well. So it's a really good high quality file. OK, so I know I went on a little bit there, but I just wanted to go through all the settings. In the first initial video, I went through quite briefly and we had a load of questions. So I'm hoping that this one gives you a bit more clarity on how Zoom's changed since that first video I only did like two weeks ago and the improvements it had for safety features and so on but it's gone a bit more in depth as well if you have any questions on this particular video again do comment below and i can create updates or newer versions or if there's any trainings that you would much prefer me to create again just let me know thanks for watching and i'll speak to you all again cheers thanks for watching now come join us inside our free facebook group where on a daily basis we share tons of content to help you generate leads for your fitness business